Hey, it's Patrick from JMP Cycles, and let's talk about O2 sensors and specifically wideband versus narrowband. We're gonna talk about this in kind of a base and general ideas. Uh, you can get way off in the weeds in this into specifics, but for now, we're gonna keep this at like an entry level. And if you're not familiar with what an O2 sensor is, if you've bought or have a motorcycle built in the last 15 years, you more than likely have O2 sensors in your bike. And where they are located at is in the exhaust. And what their function is, is as your bike runs and the exhaust gases pass through the exhaust, these O2 sensors actually sniff that exhaust and determine what air fuel ratio the bike is running at. For the most part, that's their entire life and that's what they're there for. Now, most bikes have a narrow band O2 sensor. And for the most part, those narrow band O2 sensors here in late models are a thinner looking O2 sensor, a 12 millimeter where the wide bands are an 18 millimeter. But the early Harley Davidsons actually had a narrow band that was also 18 millimeters. So I said that all that just to say, you can't necessarily tell by looking what type of sensor you have, you kind of need to know, but most bikes come with a narrow band sensor. Now, the differences between the narrow band and the wide band and what their functionality is. And how that relates to your motorcycle is your state of tune. Late model fuel injection controllers rely on these O2 sensors uh, in a lot of cases to make adjustments. So most fuel injection controllers, you have a map or you have a, if you go to a custom shop, a dyno shop, they write you a map and it goes into that bike. That's just a plain old standard tune. Well, if you wanna go farther than that and run like a closed loop system, then that's where these, these sensors become even more important. So a narrow band sensor basically can only sniff an air fuel ratio of 14 or 15 to one. And that's what, when you're getting a tune, the air fuel ratio is the target that the tuner sets or that the map provider sets for your bike to run at. And most of them out of the factory come at 14.7 to one. At another time we'll do air fuel ratios, but 14.7 to one is kind of the general target on a stock bike. Those air fuel ratios can vary depending on what you wanna do with your state of tune. But the important part is the narrow band sensor can only tell it's rich or it can say it's lean. And the higher the number, the leaner it is, and the lower the number, the richer it is. So the narrow band sensor can say, oh, that's lean or that's rich. It can't tell how much, where a wide band sensor can tell you that's this amount lean or this amount rich. And some of them can have huge ranges, but generally, all wideband sensors can at least read from 10 to one to 18 to one. So very, very fat and rich to very, very lean. They have that big range where they can read and they can even do it by the 10th of a percentage point. So it could be like it's 12.2 or it's 15.1. It can tell you that. And why that's important is if your fuel injection controller is relying on those numbers, it's only as good as its sensor. So if you have a closed loop system on your bike that's either like a, a Thunder Max system or maybe a Power Vision or something, but you're relying on the stock narrow band sensor, it's not gonna be performing up to its complete capability because that narrow band sensor can only basically read 14 and 15 to one, and it can only say, well, it's fat or well, it's lean. It can't give the, the unit the specifics to say adjust back to this much. So that's your differences between a wide band and a narrow band. Depending on the modifications on your bike, that may be necessary or may not be necessary. If you have a very light, lightly modified bike, you have a fuel pack in it, you have your map from Vance and Hines, it's set, it's forget, and it's, you know, runs good all the time. If you have a highly modified bike and you're running something like a closed loop system, you're gonna wanna make sure you have those wide band sensors to get the full capacity out of your fuel injection controller. As always, have any questions or comments, feel free to drop us a comment and go work on those motorcycles.